you are thinking of naturalizing, this is what you should know. And I'm going to, you know, give you the basics as well. What are the benefits? What, motiv what should motivate you to do so? I'm not just going to talk about my motivation. Um, because growing up in Germany, I didn't think I would ever naturalize. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Phoebe Way. My name is Phoebe and on the Phoebe Way we talk about life in Germany, legal issues, social issues, my experience in Germany. So if this is what you like to see, welcome to this channel. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, activate the notification button and join this Phoebe family. Join the Phoebe family, okay? So let's get into today's video. Today's video is about the naturalization. So naturalizing to German citizenship. How do you do it? What are the benefits? Okay, that's what we're going to talk about today. And today I'm outside. I'm only outside because it has snowed and the sun is shining. And you know when the white, you know, reflects on the white, I mean, when the sun reflects on the white, it gives you a different kind of vibe. So yeah, I'm actually really happy. And um, you can't stay indoors the whole time because of lockdown, you know. Sometimes it's also good to come out into nature and enjoy nature a bit and come out and see all that is happening, you know. So I'm outside on the Weinstergasse of Kirchheim. I'm Neka, and I'll show you guys around. If you have not watched my uh, my own personal German experience video, you should. You see more views, so if that's what you want to see, go check out that video. Um, I don't know which video is going up first, actually, to be honest. I don't know if this video is going to go up before that, but yeah. And stay stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to give you other views of other parts of Stuttgart because I felt, hey, I should be showing you Germany as well. And my partner has actually given us some nice videos. So I'm going to edit that into this video as well so you see what it's all about, what Stuttgart is about, different parts of Stuttgart. All right, too much blabbing. Let's get into today's video. Naturalizing to German citizenship. Ein Bürgerung. What are the benefits? What, motiv what should motivate you to do so? I'm not just going to talk about my motivation um, because growing up in Germany, I didn't think I would ever naturalize. Um, my mom was talking about it. She got hair done. And I was like, you know, I'm black. I'm Ghanaian. When people see me, the first thing they think is Africa. Which part of Africa do you come from? That's actually the first question they ask. They don't ask you, um, which part of Germany do you come from? They ask me, which part of Africa do I come from? And also, I felt... I felt more Ghanaian than German and growing up I was holding to my Ghanaian culture and everything so tightly. So what made me change? What made me change my mind was after high school I wanted to study medicine and the military was giving a really nice offer back then, you know, because then you'd be a public servant, you would you you'd be having you'd have so many benefits but i couldn't get into it because i was still having my Ghanaian passport at that time i had the Niederlassungs erlaubnis but it wasn't the same you know you didn't have all the benefits the Niederlassungs erlaubnis allows you to have a say like to vote on certain matters when it comes to the eu and i think also the local government but not on the federal level so you are kind of limited um, when it comes to not having the German citizenship and also traveling. I love to travel. So I remember I wanted to visit one of my aunties in London and she had to write me an invitation letter and I had to go to Munich. And that time I was a teenager, I, was, I just couldn't be bothered to be doing all those things. And yeah, but now with the German passport, um, I, I can travel all over, almost everywhere. Um, the first thing I did when I got my German passport was to go to the United States to visit my cousins and also to go for her wedding. Um, that was June 2015, I think. Um, yeah, so that is it. And the process also goes fast if you produce everything. It costs 255 euros per person. And I think if you are younger, it costs less. Um, I'll leave the description. I'm, I'll leave the links in the description box down below. So if you are thinking of naturalizing, this is what you should know. And I'm going to, you know, give you the basics as well and also a few of the exceptions so that um, if you're thinking of it and you're not sure whether you're actually eligible or not, um, when it comes to naturalization, it's not um, one shoe fits all. You know, I always say that the circumstances are different. Find out what circumstances you have before you, um, you actually start to apply. Yeah, sent to that. So 
basically i did that because i wanted to because i'm living here everything that is decided in germany concerns me but what is decided in ghana i didn't i never even voted in ghana before and i had a ghanaian passport for the first 20 years of my life so you know you, you understand what i mean i have to be be able to have a say where i'm living and where the decisions affect me and that's one of the main reasons why i did and also because i wanted to have more chances where i live and also um when you are actually applying um when they ask Staatsangehörigkeit, you just say deutsch you know yeah your nationality is german and that makes some things easier um yeah if whether um a german can be black or not that's a decision um that's a discussion for another day i'm not going to even delve into that right now what are the prerequisites for german naturalization you should have lived in Germany for the past eight years. So by the time that you're applying, you should have been in Germany for eight years. There are exceptions to this rule, however. So if you have done an integration course, the eight years is cut down to seven years. Um, or if you have done the um, a dip, the much more intensive course, it can be all being cut down to six years. So go to your rat house and ask um, if you're eligible. So you have to be in Germany for at least six, um, for at least eight years, in some cases, six or seven years. And then if you've been married to a German, um, you should have been in Germany for at least three years. So that's eight years is slashed down to three years if you're married to a German. But another um, criteria is that, or another criterion for that one is that your marriage should be at least two years by the time you're applying. So you should have lived in Germany for three years at least, but the marriage should be two years old, right? And you should still be in the marriage, obviously. So that is it. And so let's talk, that's about the years. Um, language. Yes, you should be able to speak German language. You should be able to speak the German language. And the the um, the requirements, the requirement is that you should be able to speak um, language level B1, B1, yes. And also your staying permit. So it's either you have the unbefristet or what we used to call the unbefristet, but now it's either last one to so you have the settlement permit or um, anything equivalent to that. So there are the EU versions of that. If you have those ones, I'm just going to put the names here because I, I don't have them off head right now. But if that is what you have, you can also, um, you're also eligible. So I'm going to just put the name somewhere up here. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, so we talked about that. And then if you don't have the unbefristed years, but you've already been in Germany for eight years and you have maybe five years and this five years could be turned to a settlement permit because you actually fulfill the requirements for the settlement permit, you're also eligible to apply. Okay, so the language and then the um, the language, the amount of years and the kind of legal stay that you have. The next requirements would be money, finances. Are you able to support yourself financially? Should it be someone living on government assistance for unemployment or something? You should have um, a steady income coming in, you know, you should be able to take care of yourself. So if you are a housewife, for example, your husband's income should be able to cover both of you. At that time, in my case, I was a student. I had just started uni and my mom covered for me because she then was working and obviously she was the one taking care of me. But um, if you do not have a steady income, if you cannot take care of yourself, you cannot prove that you are not living on government assistance. That is not a good look okay so to that and then you need to also pass the naturalization test this naturalization test um, talks about history people and culture and also there are questions that um, that are about your particular region so if you're in baden-württemberg you have to answer questions about baden-württemberg as well so there are some passers-by as i said i don't know if you guys can see them yeah all right so good so that's that part the naturalization test this is something that a lot of people ask about how is it done so i'm going to leave a link down below so that you can actually test your knowledge if you are in germany so you know whether you are able to do it or not <laughs> um yeah it's 33 questions you have to get 17 of them right to pass and i think that's decent my mom did it she passed really well and um yeah and they are actually um test that you can practice with so i'm going to leave the description the link in the description box down below for you to check that out and this test is basically to test your social and legal knowledge in germany if you did your a levels and be tour in germany you don't have to do it so that applied to me i didn't have to do it thank god because i've been writing so many tests i'm tired i'm tired i can't even listen 
yeah, I didn't have to do it. And if you studied um, political science or any kind of legal, you have any kind of legal certificate, if you did any kind of legal studies in Germany, um, political science, legal studies, you have a degree in these um, disciplines, you don't have to do the test as well. So yeah, you're exempted from the test. So either you have an A-level certificate, you have a degree in law or legal studies or political science, you don't have to do it, okay? The next criterion is that you should not have been convicted of any criminal offense, okay? And there shouldn't be any investigation running against you. That is another thing that you should also watch out for. If you think that you have been, you have been, um, you have been convicted or you have been investigated, let the authorities know and then they will put it on hold till the decision is out and then they will continue. So that's another thing. You shouldn't be convicted of any criminal offense in in or outside of Germany. Another thing is that you should also accept the Grundgesetz, the basic law. That is the constitution of the country. So you have to pledge your respect um, and also that you're going, you're not going to do anything to go against the Grundgesetz or anything to harm the state, the Federal Republic of Germany. So whatever that is laid down in the Grundgesetz is what you're going to abide by. You're not going to endanger the state in any kind of way. And that's so that normally happens also you have to sign and then when you go um when you have been approved you go to the um what you call it, you go to the office where you're going to get the certificates of naturalization and then you also pledge that as well so you have to let, um, raise up your right hand and then you swear that oath now the last thing the last thing is that you have to give up your previous nationality. So I had to give up the Ghanaian nationality. There are some exemptions to the rule. There are some countries that actually don't have to do that. It depends on what, where you come from. I'm going to put those countries somewhere here so you know which countries those are, but not everybody who is trying to naturalize has to give up his previous citizenship. And you are given some time to provide the denunciation certificate. So beware of that. If you do not, um, if you do not provide that, um, that certificate then hello, hello. <laughs> if you do not provide that certificate then um, the citizenship is going to be revoked okay so there is a time limit on that as well don't sleep on it do not sleep on that so guys that is the end of today's video we are outside so we get some distractions some distractions here and there people are also taking walks in the beautiful weather just as we came out today so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. If it does, give, give this a thumbs up. If you have questions, you know my email down in the description box below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll gladly um, answer them. Anything else? Yeah, subscribe to this channel and keep supporting your girl. I want us to get to 1,000 subscribers so quickly, guys, in the next month. So <laughs> share these videos, share the channel, and let me know what you like to see, okay? Take good care of yourselves. Bleib super cyclish, stay hopeful, and see you same time next Sunday. Cheers! Cheers! So guys, this is called an ICE train, but not because it's going on ice, it's called Intercity Express. So this one came from Frankfurt and it will be soon arriving Stuttgart main station. Alright, this is the Phoebe way, enjoy watching. <laughs>